morning and welcome to the June Facebook Live event. I am Tim Ashoff, President and COO of Creek Carrier. Thank you for joining us. Um, just as in the past, uh, we're going to do the uh, Facebook Live event here for about a half hour. Uh, I have received some uh, questions in advance that I'll be going through as well as first providing some additional, some general company information. Uh, please do send in your questions during uh, the, the Facebook Live event here. I have a couple people that will be getting those and passing those along. Uh, so if there's a little delay and we don't get to all of them, I apologize for that, but we will get uh, as many questions answered as possible. So first off, uh, June's just been a great month. Uh, it's really been a great and exciting time around here at Creek Carrier and Schaefer Trucking. Uh, we just have a lot of activity going on, and one of the greatest things uh, going on is we continue to see real improvement in miles. Year to date, uh, we're, we're seeing just great miles per driver uh, on our over-the-road fleets. Uh, through May, our drivers uh, are receiving about, on the Crete side, about 45 to 5% more miles in the same time last year. And on the Schaefer side, we are nearly 7% more miles than last year. So that's a great thing. But the reason that is happening is because of all of you. We have provided great service to our customers, and they are in need of carriers that can continue to do that. That is why we're seeing so many opportunities. In fact, in May, we turned down over 19,000 loads that our customers offered us to haul. And in June to date, we're already up to almost 14,000 loads that we've turned down. So again, great times uh, here in June, and we hope that you're seeing the benefit of that out there. What these great times mean, though, is that we need to grow. Uh, we are down about uh, 300 or so trucks on our over-the-road fleet from a couple of years ago. Our customers are asking us to do more, and we need your help in order to be able to do that. We ask that if you see, um, run into a good quality driver out there, talk to them. Talk to them about Crete. Talk to them about Schaefer. Be honest with them. That's all we ask. Uh, and if you do find a driver that you think is the quality level of a Crete or Schaefer driver, please refer them to us. Please use your Crete Carrier app. Put that uh, your driver code in there and their name and phone number on the referral button and we'll make sure that gets right into our recruiting team and you get the opportunity to get that $500 referral bonus once they get in a truck and another $500 after they've been here for a month. Another exciting announcement that we had here just last week is that we are increasing the speed, uh, top speed of the trucks uh, when you're on cruise. Uh, as you know, right now our speed is limited at 62 miles per hour. We are increasing that speed up to 65 when you are in cruise control. As Winston Ostergaard said, there are two main components to speed. Uh, one of that is safety and one of those is also fuel efficiency. And in the last couple of years, we have seen great improvement in both of those. Uh, obviously, safety first and foremost does start with you. So whatever driver conditions you're, you're in, you need to be going the appropriate speed, obviously. Uh, but there are conditions we know that going 65 is safe, and with the safety systems we now have on our truck, including the on-guard system with the adaptive cruise control, uh, we feel that that uh, safety element is still there. On fuel efficiency, with the fuel efficiency we've gained with the engines and the drivetrain that we have now, the aerodynamics, we will have an impact on fuel efficiency. Uh, it won't be as much as it would have been two or three years ago, but we will have some. In fact, it will probably cost us about a penny a mile. And because of that, we are still going to ask you to please watch your idle time as you're out there so we have overall good fuel efficiency, as well as um, certainly out of route, uh, following fuel solutions. All of that helps our overall fuel costs. So please work with us and we'll work with you. Uh, one of the things that, you know, I did ask uh, about a month ago, uh, maybe not quite, was, hey, driver feedback. You know, what, what is some of the uh, frustrations you have? And one of those big things we heard was speed. And so we took that to heart. Uh, we evaluated what we could do, did evaluate the safety aspect, evaluated the fuel efficiency aspect, and here uh, is the result of that. So thank you for your feedback, and hopefully this is something uh, you have uh, in mind as a positive thing. So we did get a question already. Uh, do drivers have to set crews at 65 in order to go 65? Uh, yes, what you can do is on the foot pedal, you can get up to 62. You can turn the cruise on and then accelerate uh, through the cruise system up to 65. That is how I'm told it will operate. Um, obviously, as you all know, I'm not a driver. I uh, haven't done that personally, but that's how I'm told it will work. So we'll work through that. Uh, as you know, starting uh, Monday, June 19th, when you go in for an A or B service, uh, the shops will um, make the adjustment in your electronic control model of your module of your engine to make that happen. Speaking of shops, uh, another great thing that we are seeing is that the percentage of time that our trucks are in any of our shops or outside shops has gone down significantly in the last two years. In fact, our shop time is down two-thirds from uh, two years ago and down 50% just from last year. 
Um, Winston and uh, many other on the uh, AMS team have really been working hard to improve our uptime and improve the throughput through the shops. So we really appreciate the patience you had with us over the last couple of years. We have bought a lot of new equipment, which helps that. Uh, the new equipment obviously doesn't need to be serviced as much. Um, that's helping that. We've also increased the number of techs we've had and some of the processes we use in the shop to really make that improvement. The other thing is our road call center. Uh, we've made some very significant changes in there. Uh, George Brundage had taken over that area um, a little over a year ago, and he and that team have also made great improvements. Our call wait time is down significantly. Our total response town time is up. Some of the things we've done with our tire vendors across the country have helped that as well. Additionally, we are seeing the benefit, obviously, of some of the systems we invested in on our equipment. You know, on our trailers now, we are we have been for a couple of years putting in. Um, the auto inflate systems on the trailers. So if we have a low tire, a lower tire on the trailer, when you connect, it's bringing it up to the proper PSI. That obviously helps avoid any tire issues as you're out there on the road. So we are making investments uh, for you to help keep your uptime um, out there because we all know that's important. You have 11 hours in a day to drive, 11 hours to earn money. We're doing everything we can to ensure we can help you utilize those 11 hours effectively. I had some questions that uh, this week I was uh, doing some driver meetings in Lenore City. Um, did uh, one on Wednesday and Thursday, and so I had gotten some questions from drivers there and wanted to share some of those with you. One of the questions was, um, you know, you say it's busy. Um, why is it busy? What are we seeing from our customers? And why are we busier when sometimes I had heard from other companies they weren't as busier? Um, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that right now. Well, first of all, as I said earlier, one of the reasons that we may be busier than some others, and, and I think right now most companies are getting a little busier, but we have been seeing our business increase since last, last October, is because of the great quality service we do provide to our customers. And again, I thank you for that. Last year, 2016, we won more Carry of the Year awards than we had in a long, long time. And those awards are generally based on two major factors, one of them service and the other one is safety. And obviously, because of all of you out there, because of the teams we have in the offices in the shop and all of us working together as a team, uh, we do a great job on service and safety. And so thank you for that. Uh, this year, we've already won some Carrier of the Year's award. We had uh, the Nestle Waters, um, excuse me, Midwest uh, Carrier of the Year. This is the second year in a row that we've won that. We got a service award from Lowe's and just this week, we received an outstanding award, service award from Conexo, uh, formerly known as FAC. Uh, and they are customers that are both Crete and Schaefer customers. So uh, really appreciate everyone and their efforts to continue to provide that good service. That is providing great opportunity for us. One of the things, as I said, that went into that, uh, those awards is safety. And uh, we are having a very good year on safety. And, and that's uh, obviously a great thing for all of you as well. Um, your driving records are very important to you. Your own safety is very important to you. A couple of the safety metrics we look at are our CSA scores, and our CSA scores remain the top amongst all truckload carriers, for hire truckload carriers like us on the road. But one of the other ones we look at is our number of DOT preventable accidents per million miles. We have a goal to be below 0.25 DOT preventable accident per million miles. That's one preventable accident in every 4 million miles that you drive, which is really pretty amazing. Uh, and we're actually on pace and actually doing better than that goal. Right now, we're at about 0.245 DOT preventable accidents per million miles. Uh, we're going into the summer months, and our year ends on how we measure our uh, key operating measures at the end of September. And uh, the summer months are generally better for us. So I would not be surprised, given uh, the quality of driving you all do out there, that we could be in that 0.22 range uh, at the end of this year. So outstanding job. Thank you very much for that. Um, look at a few other things here that we had talked about during our, our meetings. Um, we had a couple positives that we've done in, in the last uh, month or so. One of them is the uh, Cat Scales app. I know we've tried to communicate out there, but we did have a number of drivers out there uh, at the meeting that hadn't been aware of that yet or had been aware of it, but really hadn't uh, looked into the app and understood the benefits. The feedback I got from the drivers that have it is it's great. You pull on the scale, you, and you confirm your location, pulls in your driver code and some other information that you need. I think you have to add the trip number, but you're on and off the scales, quick amount of time. You don't have to go in to get uh, a receipt. Uh, you don't have to uh, seek reimbursement. It's all automated. So what I found um, in, in talking with uh, a lot of drivers now about it, the best way uh, to actually feel, to see the advantages of the app and maybe to help you download it is talk to another Creed or Schaefer driver that has it. 
I found that so many of our drivers are so willing to help each other that if you're out there on the road, you're having maybe a little bit of a difficult time understanding how the app works, how to download it, find another Crete or Schaefer driver. Odds are they'll have the app and I know they're going to be more than willing to help you. A similar uh, situation with the Transflow Plus app. We have over 50% of our drivers right now that are using the Transflow Plus app. Uh, as most of you probably know, the Transflow Up Plus app allows you to take pictures of your trip paperwork and simply send it in through, your application, applica through the uh, application on the phone rather than having to stop at a truck stop to Transflow it or at one of our facilities. This greatly speeds up your payroll. Uh, we, we can see the images very well, so they, they do process very well. There have been great improvements made in that app. So please also consider using that app. An added benefit of the app is now we have that tied to the Omnitrax Qualcomm system in your truck where you can receive um, messages while you're away from the truck on your phone through the Transflow app. Uh, again, you know, the driver feedback at the meeting last, this, this week was a, that that was very positive. Not having to be tied to your truck, you know, maybe waiting for that next load assignment. Uh, maybe when you're coming out of the house, uh, not having to go out and, and check in the truck uh, to see if you've gotten your load assignment yet it has been a great benefit and, again, a time saver for all of you. One of the things that did come up, too, is... Um, uh, particularly maybe among some of our newer drivers is that, um, y you know, I worked at a company, I, I had a driver talk to me that said, you know, I worked at a company that uh, is a large trucking company, but they did everything for me. Uh, they told me what time to start driving, what time to stop driving, uh, what time to send this message, what time to do this, do that. They gave me turn by turn instructions. And then having been out on the road, this is the first time I've really got to make my own decisions, being my, the captain of my own ship, so to speak, and, and just a little bit of a comfort level that driver wanted to ensure they were doing proper, proper trip planning and otherwise. And it made me think about uh, what we had started recently, which is the driver mentor program. And uh, we have a number of you drivers out there, over 100 of good quality, uh, mostly of our, our longer term drivers that have signed up to say, look, I'm available to help another Crete or Schaefer driver need, uh, in need, or you know, just feeling that has some questions about even some minor things. So uh, that program is out there. I want to make sure all of you are aware of that. If you're, if you're interested in talking to a driver, you might be that driver that worked at a, a company that operates a little bit different than us and, and want to understand how um, some of the things work or how maybe you'd be able to do better. Contact your fleet manager. Uh, they can get you connected with the driver mentor. And we can have a real informal you know, telephone conversation with that driver mentor and talk driver to driver and uh, understand how things are working here. If you're, you yourself are interested in being a driver mentor, also please contact your fleet manager. Uh, they can work you through that program and certainly help get you connect with other drivers so we can have that sense of community and family that we really are here at Creek Carrier and Schaefer Trucking. Along those lines, another discussion we had was about the uh, new website that we launched uh, about a, six or seven weeks ago called MyCreteStory.com. And that came out of uh, really a conversation that uh, came between drivers, between uh, Tom Ostergaard and me. And, and, you know, we see a lot of drivers here in Lincoln, whether it's down in the lunchroom or we talk to all of our 20-year-plus uh, drivers. We meet with them every time they hit their anniversary. And we realized, you know, we have a lot of great drivers and all of you have a lot of great story stories. We also have a lot of great office and shop personnel. And, you know, one thing is you grow as a company, and even though we are very much a family company, it gets harder um, to know everyone in the family, so to speak. And so uh, after one of those meetings, I talked to our marketing team and said, hey, can we create a place where with technology today, our, our family members can share their stories? And so that was the uh, beginning of MyCreteStory.com. And I really encourage you to go out there and look. There's, there's a number of drivers, office shop folks that have uh, sent us a short two, three-minute video about how did they get into trucking, why they love trucking, why they're at Creek Carrier. Uh, we get those sent in to, uh, there's a, an email box listed there on the website where you can send in your story. Uh, our, our marketing team then formats it and uh, gets it correctly to put out on that website. And we'd like to get your story out there too, because we truly would uh, like to get, you know, get to know all of um, our family members here at Creek and Schaefer. You know, uh, one of the things that, that came up, too, was, hey, what's going on in, in New Kingstown? I've, I've been driving by as I've gone out there, and I see across the road there's construction. Well, as we announced earlier, we are building a brand-new facility um, in New Kingstown. Uh, it's, a, it's certainly a well-needed, well-deserved facility for all of our drivers, certainly those based out in New Kingstown. So right across Route 11 to what I call the north of our current facility, we are building a brand-new state-of-the-art 
uh, trucking terminal. It will have a large shop with a tractor shop, trailer shop, uh, body shop component of it, a fueling island, uh, inspection lane there at the fueling island, very similar uh, to Lenora City. We then will also have uh, a large office facility uh, so we can continue to do all of the things we do in New Kingstown um, as we do today. But most importantly, it's going to have a much needed upgraded uh, driver center. Uh, I know I, I get a lot of sort of uh, chuckles from um, you know, people that have been to New Kingstown and been to our driver center in, in the barn. And the barn is cer certainly a, uh, a, a legend uh, amongst our drivers as places to go. Uh, it's been around for a long time it's, and it's been a staple for, for Schaefer Trucking. But it is time to upgrade that, uh, time to make the laundry facilities, the shower facilities, all the other amenities what you, what you all deserve out there. So that construction's well underway. Uh, progress is going well, and we are looking to have a grand opening of that facility, hopefully uh, about December 10th of this year. So we're really excited about that and look forward to having that new facility out there for you. Uh, I'm going to look here to see if we have uh, some other uh, uh, questions that uh, may be out there from our drivers. So I will talk about that and uh, go through them. Okay, so here, first question that I've uh, got here is uh, idle time in the summers. Um, what do we, how do we look at idle time? How do we look at uh, fuel efficiency? You know, we've gone back to opti idle uh, start stop systems. Um, are those the systems that are the most efficient now is essentially the question. And the answer to that is right now, yes. Um, you know, we've had different idle systems over the years from, um, you know, diesel powered APUs, battery powered APUs, and then the, then the opti idle start stop type systems. We work closely with our manufacturers to determine, hey, what is the two things? What are the systems that can provide you sufficient heating and cooling and the power you need in order to be comfortable there on the road? We need you to be comfortable out there, obviously, so you can get good sleep and so you can uh, certainly have uh, the lifestyle that you deserve um, as a driver. So we work with them and say, hey, what is the best system right now? And right now from our manufacturers, the best system is the start-stop opti-idle systems. Part of that is because the, the main engine on the, on the truck has become much more efficient along with some of the heating cooling systems themselves are more efficient and then what the manufacturers have done with the cabs themselves to make them better insulated uh, in order to um, you know maintain that heating and cooling for longer periods of time so as we work with them right now the start stop opti idle systems are the best systems out there they are the most economical and so that is what we are going with uh, we will continue to work with them you know who knows over the years um, there can be improvements in the battery powered systems or other systems that we may uh, rotate back to. But again, the, the, the goal is to provide you uh, the, the best system to provide you that consistent heating and air and the level of power you need as a driver. Now, some of them, uh, some, the, the follow up question to that is well, then how do we manage idle? Uh, as I mentioned before, we do need to manage our costs, fuel being our second largest cost as a company. The how we manage idle is this. So we have each of our terminal managers uh, look at their fleet and they compare the drivers that are in the same year and model of truck with the other drivers on their fleet. So we're coming into the summertime here. We know it's, it's warmer and that you'll be uh, idling the main engine more for cooling. So we will look at the average idle time for the type of truck you're in. So say in, in the month of June, that average idle time for the truck that you're in is 32%. So if that's where you're at, perfect. Your average, you're using the truck, the system is working correctly like it should. Now, if we see your idle time is 50%, uh, your fleet management team is going to contact you and say, hey, your idle time seems to be um, significantly above the rest of the drivers in the same type of trucks that you're in. We need to figure out why. Do you have a bad battery and the truck is uh, starting up idling more in order to charge those batteries? Is your cooling system not sufficiently charged so it's having to work more? We need to have those conversations with you uh, so we can ensure that we manage that idle time and give you uh, the most economical um, and sufficient idling system out there. A couple other questions I had had is um, about uh, load select. So years ago, we had uh, what was called the load select policy, where we would offer all of our uh, over-the-road drivers two or three loads uh, for their dispatch. We had to change that when the hours of service rules changed. And in essence, the drivers, uh, you drivers out there, did not have the flexibility that you do t today. So with the electronic logs and with the 10-hour uh, break being required, so having that 14-hour window, 
we really have to match up the best appointment times we can get to match the available hours of service that not only you, but all the drivers in that same area have. So we can use each driver's hours to, um, to the peak. And absolutely, we know that that's what you want because, again, as I mentioned earlier, the use of your hours is uh, critical to you making um, the money, the miles that you need. So we had to move away from offering one driver three loads because that load, one of those loads may have been the load that driver number two can use their best hours possible. Um, the other thing that comes into play with that is uh, we need to make sure that we are getting drivers to the right locations to meet other needs of theirs. So the biggest one of that obviously being home time. So if we have uh, three loads, uh, one of them matches and you're driver number one and we have driver number two and we have driver number three and load number three matches uh, uh, load number one best for hours. We look to give load number one to that driver. If load number two uh, matches you know, driver number one for the direction they need to go because it needs to get them home, we have to do that. And then you know, load number three may match driver number one's hours or other drivers needs the best. So in managing that with drivers not having the uh, flexibility that you've had in the past to split your um, sleeper birth time to match load times and appointment times, we have to just be much more accurate in every single load that we dispatch. Uh, to you that to make it the best for the overall drivers out there. So I appreciate that question. We do look to see, is that something in certain areas where we have great density? Could we do more of that? Um, but the other thing we're also looking at is, could we actually do more pre-planning of the load so that you know uh, when you at, at your, at your um, arrival uh, at your constantly location that we can get you your next load quicker, maybe even before you're um, done unloading. And we've started to do that more. Some of you have probably seen that, uh, but we're doing that more to try to help you better plan your time. What direction should I be going from the constant E? How do I know where I sh should I start scheduling my breaks? Um, so um, good questions, and we appreciate um, the uh, somewhat the uh, independence that gave you, but we're balancing that with getting every driver the most available hours given their hours of service and to get them home. Some other questions here I'm going to grab. Um, uh, one of the questions I have, and it is, uh, do drivers have to wait for their next PM to get their speed changed? Uh, yes, we ask you to do that. As you might imagine, um, we have our truck, trucks, or our shops set up to, to obviously service the numbers of trucks we have based upon their regular service intervals. If on Monday, all 5,000 drivers of you went into a shop, we'd be overloaded. Uh, you wouldn't be getting work done. You'd be in long uh, wait times and we wouldn't be hauling any customer's freight. So we know, um, obviously this is a, we think a positive thing for you. Otherwise I wouldn't have gotten that question and that you do all want to get your speed in and get it changed. But please work with us. Uh, we'll get you routed through the shops when you're due for your PM. Uh, and this will go in relative short order. I mean, it, it should take, you know, generally between A, A's and B services uh, right now, you, you know, you'll be in within the next uh, two months, I would, I would imagine, and uh, we will get uh, that speed updated. So do appreciate the question, and hopefully you work with us and understand the reasoning behind that. As uh, I talked to one driver, he said, well, I appreciate that. We've been at, you know, 62 since I think, you know, 2008 or something like that. So uh, another month or two is, isn't going to make a huge difference. So I do appreciate everyone's patience and working with us on that. Uh, a few more um, questions we have here. Um, uh, one of the questions again here is why did we si decide to put uh, the 65 in cruise instead of the pedal? I touched on that briefly, but I will touch on that a little bit more. So again, the two main reasons for, uh, for uh, managing speed is safety and also um, fuel efficiency. So there, there's components of both of those in, in increasing the speed on cruise. So first of all, from a safety perspective, when you're in cruise, the systems we have in our truck now have adaptive cruise control. So if you're coming upon traffic that's going slower than you, it automatically reduces your speed. Or if you have a car that goes in front of you uh, and maybe then drops back at, at, say, you're at 65 and it's coming in front of you at 64, 63, maybe 60, it automatically uh, reduces that speed uh, and it can function quicker than human reaction. So that's one aspect of it. But probably a bigger aspect of it is fuel efficiency. 
our trucks are much more fuel efficient in cruise than on the foot pedal. So by using the, the systems that we have um, in the in the truck, is primarily the cruise control, that's how we're going to minimize the impact on fuel efficiency. As I mentioned before, making this change is going to cost us, um, you know, a penny or so a mile. And when we as a company run about 750 million miles a year, you can understand what that cost really is. So we need to try to manage that cost. And one way to do that is by use of the cruise. So those are the primary reasons that we've done that. So we appreciate that question. And do still think there will be uh, a good benefit overall to this. Uh, I got a couple more questions here that I've got to get through. I'm getting them handed to me in different uh, piles here. So I got to try to get through them as much as I can. A uh, couple things that I, I've also been asked about is um, when a driver um, brings a trailer in for service, um, they get, uh, I think, a quarter of a safety point, maybe a third. I can't remember exactly right now. Could we get that bumped up to a full safety point? And I think that's a very good question, and that is something we do need to look at. We appreciate all of you for uh, bringing in trailers for service. That is so important. And, you know, we've worked hard over the last 18 months to get all the services on our trailers upgraded. You know, as many of you know who have been here for a while, we opened up getting those services out on the TAs and loves on the road, brought a lot of those really up to date. And when I say up to date, just so you know, the DOT requires of an inspection of a trailer every 12 months. We do those inspections every 90 days. So we ask to our, our, our drivers to help us out get inspections much more uh, often than, than the DOT requires and often uh, much more than many other companies out there. And that's really for your benefit. A well-maintained trailer is going to obviously provide you well, uh, really good uptime and ensure that we don't have issues with tires, lights, and brakes. Those are the big things out there on trailers, obviously. So the more we can get those through the shop in a timely fashion, the better we are. So good suggestion. I will work with both the safety and the shop team, see if that's a better encouragement will help our drivers to continue to do that. I really do thank the drivers that bring uh, the trailers into the shop. I know there are many of you that do. I know there are many of you that maybe take a little bit of extra time to do that. But you know, in the long run, that's better for you and for everyone. And if that every driver would do that, the time it would take for everyone else would actually be less because the drivers that, that all of our trailers then would be serviced on time. There would not be issues with them. So please do take the time to do that. And most of all, thank you for, to all of those drivers that do. A uh, question here, and I've had this question before, and the driver who asked this knows who you are, and I do appreciate that. But is there going to be a company-wide suggestion box? And you know what? I told this driver, and I, and I sincerely meant it at the time, and I still do that. Yes, we were working on a system to do that. The system that uh, we were sold that would do that didn't do it. doesn't do exactly uh, what they told us it would. And we've worked for two years to try to get that done. I don't know that we're going to get there with that. So now what we're doing is we're looking at a different means to do that, actually through a, uh, an app on your phone, hopefully through the TransFlow Mobile Plus app. So you have one app you can go to, not only get your messages, not only do your TransFlow, as I mentioned before, but also have an avenue to provide us feedback. Feedback not only about, hey, what can we do better, but we have some customers out there, and we have a lot of really good customers, as you all know, but they would like feedback about their experience, um, uh, the experience they provide for you. So how do they do when you go to pick up one of their loads? What are their customers like? So we're working on that mechanism now and hope to have that out there much sooner than two years. So uh, appreciate your patience. Uh, do appreciate all the suggestions we do get, Facebook, otherwise, driver meetings. Uh, we do uh, take your feedback. Uh, you know, Sometimes, just so people understand, we're not as quick to change as, as you might think we can be because there's a lot of aspects that go into making a change. Some that don't seem quite as apparent, but we do take that feedback, as I mentioned. Uh, on the 65 mile an hour. I mean, we I heard from you all loud and clear about a month ago when I asked the question out here on Facebook, what are some of the challenges you see out there? And that was one of the number one ones. So we, we took that to heart. We looked at it. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it is a change that, that does take an investment from us. Uh, and we are making that investment um, for all of you. So do appreciate that. All right. Um, let me see here. A couple other questions I have. I think I may have touched on a lot of these. Um, I have a question here about when a new driver or student comes on, do they get a new truck after um, training or onboarding or do they get a used one? So the way we manage our trucks is, is that we have to try to use all uh, of our trucks that are available and nearest to where you are. So wherever you're onboarding, uh, and maybe you know, we have onboarding sites, as, as most of you know, in Lincoln, Wilmer, Texas, uh, New Kingstown, Pennsylvania, and Lenore City, Tennessee. 
So when drivers are coming out of out of orientation, onboarding, or getting off the truck to from a student driving, we look at what trucks are available in the areas closest to you. Uh, some of those may be new trucks, but often um, the, those trucks will be used. Now, when we say used, think about um, what we do for trucks. So we keep our trucks on average for 425, 450,000 miles, so four years or less typically. So our trucks are, are, are not old trucks. They're well-maintained. They're, they're, they're modern equipment. So whatever truck you're getting in is going to be um, a reasonably new truck. And many of the trucks, you know, it could be, it could be anywhere from, as I mentioned, brand new to, um, you know, maybe having 30,000 miles less, uh, 400,000 miles on it. So in another month, you're going to get a, a truck. Typically, the drivers that get a new truck are the ones coming out of a truck that have 430,000 miles on them. The reason we do that is, hey, you just were driving an older truck, uh, and so um, you deserve to get in to that newer truck. The other reason we do that is we trade in our used trucks or sell them, so we need to get those trucks to the locations where we get the new ones. And so often it's the drivers and in, in sometimes in those oldest trucks that um, get the newer trucks. But uh, anyone coming out of orientation and student upgrading, we look to say, hey, what truck's available um, closest to you so we can get you in the truck and get you out there making miles? Good questions. All right. You know what? I think I've almost covered all the questions here. If I have not covered your question, please make sure you do put it out there on Facebook. i um, be happy to do that. We can respond to that uh, out there on Facebook. But with that, I just want to say again, thank you for everything you do. I know it is construction season out there, summertime, a lot of summer travelers. The, the one thing I will ask you is please watch your speed in those construction zones. Uh, that is one uh, violation for CSA that does go up in the summertime just because there is more construction out there. Watch those transition zones for speed. Uh, and that's for you and for your benefit. That's for the safety of you, for the safety of the road construction workers. And I know all of you, given our safety record, understand safety first and foremost and, and do watch that speed in those areas. So I do appreciate that. With that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, have a great June. Have a great 4th of July coming up here, and I'll talk to you again in July. Thank you.